up you guys welcome back to my channel i'm really excited today because i'm finally doing episode four of safe single and left behind i have been slacking on this series and i am so encouraged because there are many of you who have reached out in my dms who have texted me who have told me in person like i've been so encouraged by that series and by your testimony even in the comment section of that video just letting me know how the series has impacted you and asking like when is the next episode please keep going uh we need this information that you're sharing so i am here today with the next episode today's episode is actually entitled something that i really feel like i've been dealing with uh head on these last few months it's a groundbreaking monumental statement that i think some of us have heard but we haven't really grasped and it's this concept that the perfect guy legitimately says does not exist it doesn't exist and i know that may sound devastating for you and I'm going to talk to you about my journey with it um, recently of why I've just come to terms with the reality that it just, it doesn't exist. And I'm going to talk today about my personal experience with this idea of the perfect guy and grieving that and letting it go, sis. And actually how uh, what you get in reality is much better than what we think the perfect guy should be. So before we even start, I think we should just talk about what is the perfect guy and where the heck do we get this idea of what a perfect guy is? Like, who tells us what this perfect guy is? I looks like and is like and etc so y'all know i take notes and when i was coming up with my notes or my list to share with you guys uh i want to give a disclaimer that this is heavily influenced by church and by family uh by movies and i think it's the list that most people most women would agree with that they formulated in their own minds about what a perfect guy would look like like if we could just you know mix potions and come up with this perfect guy what does society say that perfect guy looks like so the first thing i put on my list is tall dark and handsome y'all know the way the movies are set up um they do give credit to light skins but like you know tall dark and handsome is like this this stereotypical like if i had to think of a perfect guy this is what he would look you know all beefy muscular whatever he's just perfectly tall like i'm a tall girl y'all know i'm 5 10 um and i wear like at least four inch heels when i wear heels uh so i'm out here stepping at like 6 2 at times so in my mind i'm like oh he's got to be at least 6 2 6 3 6 5 so that I could just be out here wearing whatever shoes I feel like wearing um, and he could be taller than me. And I like, this one has frustrated me the most you guys because I am trying to figure out like, where do we like, I, I get movies and all that stuff, but what is it about the height that people impose on us as women? Like that we cannot be taller than the guy and that it's just this awkward thing. Like I remember fishing through Kevin Hart's uh, comment section one time on a picture of him and his wife. And y'all know like his wife is significantly talk to him and she wears heels and she be living her best life kudos to her um and most people in the in the comment section you know are like hyping them up yes y'all look good but there was a whole series of comments of just like people going ham about the height difference and i'm like of all the things in this photo why is it that we put so much emphasis on height and we almost attach like these values to height like if he's taller than me he can protect me if he's taller than me he can pick me up if he's taller than me like you know i just feel protected and loved and whatever like it's so interesting to me that height has such a major impact on everything but anyway so the rest of my list i'm just gonna go down the list and list the things and we can talk about them all later so tall dark and handsome a uh, virgin or not sexually active and by that i mean like celibate or whatever you want to say um abstinent all that he doesn't cuss uh he doesn't smoke or drink and that's weed cigarettes whatever he don't smoke <laughs> perfectly healthy family so he has like this two-parent household where your kids will have these awesome grandparents and you know they're established and they're just he's come from this healthy you know ideal family educated so preferably a college degree but also like bonus points if he's a lawyer or a doctor or like some kind of doctoral degree the list includes like excellent finances that he has this savings account and manages his finances as well and like you know is sitting on some good money and with that nice money comes like a nice car he lives in a 
nice place. He has his own place. He dresses like he has money, you know. And then the last one I put on there because I think if our parents, if churchy parents could pick for us, they would pick us to be dating a pastor's kid or somebody who's a minister in the church or has some kind of like role in the church. That's like you hit the jackpot. Like you gonna be a first lady, you hit the jackpot. And if you can't hit the jackpot, at least you have some role in ministry in the church. Like you're just hardcore church guy. And all of this before they meet their spouse. I think that's the most important point I wanna make about this perfect list. Is that we're supposed to find these men at this stage of life with all of these great things and, and facets and assets. And in my case, I'm 25. I know people who got married at 19 and 20. So he's supposed to have all that and be all the hats before 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, or like in my case, 25. Ladies. I know it doesn't seem ideal when I put it this way and it's like, duh, but like we really are out here operating as if we have to have a man who checks out this entire list by the time that we're ready to get married. And what I have to come to terms with really, especially for our generation, is that this is not as possible as it was for our parents. Like, our parents didn't have to have, you know, a master's degree or a doctoral degree to get a good paying job. Like, my dad has been at his job for 44 years. He started working there when he was 18, you know, promoted and moved and et cetera, all in the same job for 44 years. Like, where did they do that? Like, our generation, does not have that kind of access. So for us to be putting these kind of expectations on the guy that we're interested in or the partner that we're interested in, it is not realistic. And you couldn't convince me of that a while ago. And actually if you would have asked me like what my ideal guy was, I would not have believed that I was shallow. Like that was one of the things that my friends had told me uh, as like I was talking about my dating life over the past few years. They were like, we just want you to know that you're shallow. And I'm like, what? No, I'm not, I'm not shallow, what? Like the fact that I wouldn't date a shorter guy, like, oh no, I'm not shallow. But then you line up like a series of guys in front of me and I'm like, oh no, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have this. So even though I didn't believe that I had a list that I was abiding by and was that shallow, when push came to shove, it was like, oh no, maybe I'm a little shallow. If you're anything like me, you look up to couples. Like, there's multiple couples that I look up to. Like, for example, Kadeem and uh, Deval. I love them so much. And it's like, you look at a couple like that, and you're like, man, they just, they got it going for them. They got the family, they're popping. Like, they have a name for themselves. They have this legacy that they're building. Like, wow, that's popping. And I just listened to the first episode of their uh, new podcast. And y'all, it, it shook me to really realize that couples don't start there. Like, especially with social media age, we look at these couples and we think like, wow, and we kind of just like glorify them. But they didn't start there. Like, she didn't marry him when he was like that. Like, she didn't marry him at that stage. And I know it's dangerous sometimes for us to try to think of this idea of like marrying potential or dating potential. But I think you can tell the difference when there's red flags that say, okay, this potential is not worth me sticking around to see how it flourishes. But I think with all couples, you can tell like, the potential is there and it's safe and healthy for me to move forward in this relationship. Looking forward to the potential because they really have that like healthy foundation that convinces me like, okay, I can believe in their potential safely without like wrecking my life. And we'll see this potential, you know, eventually flourish and become success. And I think in the most recent months when I've had to like really come to terms with this like figurative list that's been holding me back, the thing that really moved me in a different direction was realizing that I was placing the things on that list above the character and the heart of the person. Character and heart were like secondary. It was like, okay, if you didn't have those things, I wasn't even looking to see what your character was, what your heart was, how well you could love me or care for me. I wasn't even interested because it was like, well, you didn't meet this list, so I don't, I'm not even giving you the time of day. And even though you would ask like your parents and other people, like if character and heart are like the real things that they value, you know, everybody would say, of course, like it's the character that counts and all that kind of stuff. But when we look at how we operate in relationships, 
character and heart, like, they're second. They always come second. Like, they don't, people don't put the kind of emphasis on those that they do on that outward appearance. And I think the outward appearance also has a lot to do with how we think other people will perceive us in this relationship. So, like, what will people say about this relationship? How will people look at us? And, like, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I, I, is this, like... I'm trying to think of this characteristic of social media culture or whatever that we would put that much emphasis on other people's opinions of the things that we do that we would pass up an opportunity to be loved well and to love well in a healthy amazing relationship all because it doesn't look like what other people expected it to look like and y'all when I was sitting with this it was just kind of like oh my gosh like that is that is ultimate shallow I just keep thinking how different my love life might have been if I had been raised apart from these like ideals and if I wasn't looking for these things in this perfect prince charming that had it all together like it's just so unrealistic and actually I want to go through this list and just tell you guys how unrealistic it is okay tall dark and handsome well we we pretty much talked about that one um, I'm still a little bit of a like chocolate girl, but that would not be a determinant in whether or not I would allow somebody to love me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be that many, I promise. But like virgin, like, and not be sexually active, to me it's all about how the person that approaches you is in that current relationship and moving forward. Like if we want to hold people's cast against them and, um, you know, not allow certain people opportunities because of what their past has been. I mean, now you, you know, determine how much of that you would allow. Like if he has children from a past relationship or, you know, something like that, then that's on you, you know, how you decide to move forward in a situation like that. But strictly just thinking about whether or not he's a virgin, I want us to disconnect, especially in the church, um, people's sexuality from their value. Like, your sexual past is not an indication of your value or your worth. God loves you just as much as he did when you were born than he did after you did all that. And I think when we say virgin on a perfect list, we're making a value judgment. We're saying that your worth has gone down some if you've been sexually active or if you've done X, Y, Z. Like, you're no longer worthy of certain things because of that experience. I feel like that's a very detrimental idea. And I think it also dishonors the forgiveness and the love that God grants us. Like, how is it that we get to hold people's past over their head and yet God threw it into the sea? If they have repented and have turned away from that lifestyle and turned away from that struggle and are actively choosing something differently, how is it that we get to hold the, uh, their past over their heads? To me, it just, it doesn't make sense. So the no cussing, smoking, and drinking, I think is something that I still value on this list. Um, specifically because they're not things that I do. I'm not excessively drinking, I'm not smoking, I'm not like cussing is not a part of my everyday language. And so it's like, it kind of hints at the concept of being like unequally yoked. You know, like it would just be like, why are those things okay for your spouse, but they're things that you've decided that you won't engage in. So for me, I still hold on to those pretty much on the list and I don't think they're um, unreasonable and it's something that you really have to talk about or kind of negotiate with yourself. First of all, what are those boundaries? What do I believe God is calling me to as far as boundaries about that? And then talking about it with whoever it is that you're interested in um, to see what that looks like for your particular relationship. A perfectly healthy family. Like, this whole two-parent idea of a perfect family. I get it. Like, when you deal with somebody's family and, you know, you didn't consider their family in your decision-making and so it's kind of like, you know, I had to deal with X, Y, and Z and I don't want you to have to also deal with those kind of things. It's like, okay, I get it. I get the concern. But, to me, it's very unrealistic. Um, because if that's the case, then that means everybody who doesn't have a, a two-parent household with uh, you know healthy relationships with everyone in their immediate family then they're all off the table for relationships and marriage and that's just like come on you guys I know plenty of people who did not come from a super healthy family background um, that were adamant about making their experiences different for themselves and their family I mean my dad is a perfect example of that um, and so I don't think that that's something that disqualifies someone and I also again don't think that having a two-parent household is an automatic uh, healthy situation you know what I'm saying like you have a two-parent household that was 
hell you know what i'm saying like i feel like it's negotiated with each situation like is this something that's manageable that you two have talked through um that you're walking in aware the education piece i think that this is another one where i kind of got a little bit stuck at one point when i was about like 17 or 18 um and being interested in someone at the time who was not pursuing college and had no intention um and so i kind of had to think about like is this something that i value is it that they have to have a college degree what do what am i associating a college degree with what value am i placing on a college degree because i know tons of people who don't have a college degree that are out here doing just fine uh, who are dreamers they're motivated they're business owners there's a lot of things that you can still accomplish outside of a college degree especially because he could be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever and be a butthole or not love me or not take good care of me like y'all are more worried about him being this professional man than about how well he takes care of me and it's like yeah, like what the nice part nice place to live nice things to me again i know too many couples who when they got married, it wasn't about nice things or the other person having nice things. They built a legacy together. They built um, their finances together and were eventually able to have all of those things if that's what they wanted. So looking for a guy who has nice things already, while that may be a perk that some guy just, I mean, by 25 has a 401k and is a lawyer and, you know, can do that, can have nice things at that age, that is, that is like... The exception that is not the rule like that is the exception and then this last one I just want to simmer here for a minute about the guy being like a pastor's kid or a minister or like some role in the church while I do absolutely believe that as a believer I need to be dating a believer that's not a question at all for me but the idea that he has to have some role in the church in order to be spiritually sound enough for me is a little bit like that's not no like why do i have to be a first lady and he has to be a pastor for us to serve christ through our lives and our ministry like i don't think god has called all of us into a uh a role like that in the church while i do believe we all give back to ministry through our churches and use our gifts like, i don't just leave the ministry in the church i'm not just here to minister to church people like that doesn't even make sense if you're supposed to be going after the lost and going to seek the lost uh for the kingdom of god how am i gonna do that in the four walls of the church only like that doesn't no no how am i evangelizing people who have already been evangelized so I think we have it wrong there of like that that's the ideal that's the goal that's the like nah like it's just not like it's not realistic and the funny thing about all of these is there's not enough of these people in the world like I was trying to look up the statistics of single black men who are who even fit these categories or like one man who has all of these things especially by my age like of 25 Bam! what no there's like ugh. those men are the exception they are not the rule and i was always concerned about this concept of like evangel dating basically evangelizing someone that you're dating um or bringing them to christ or you know helping them grow in their relationship with christ and i think we have that idea to do and i might do a whole separate episode on evangel dating i really think i should should do a whole separate episode on the man dating but what i want to say about that now is that is that we don't leave room for our process we don't leave room for the idea that in a relationship the two people influence one another to become better i could ask anybody in a relationship who would say that they are not the same person that they were when they first started dating the person that that person had some influence on them called them higher made them better made them stronger you know challenged them whatever and so this concept that the person has to be perfect before we meet them it literally does not exist y'all it, it just it doesn't everybody everybody got something that's the other thing i want to point out with you guys is as i was doing this this whole perfect guy list i wasn't placing as much value or as much concern on what I'm bringing to the table and I think sometimes we have an elevated idea or a prideful idea of us especially if we you know I can check off some of those boxes of you know a person that's a virgin it doesn't cut it doesn't smoke it doesn't drink you know all, all of that stuff we kind of glorify this stuff and say okay if we meet those standards then we're just a perfect girlfriend and it's like 
everybody got mess. Like, y'all, there are things that have been revealed in me just through doing this series. Like, let's be real, over the last like six months that I'm like, I got work to do. I have work to do and everybody has work to do. Nobody is perfect and just ready to go like a hot pocket. Like, no, no. Even if that hot pocket look good, you know sometimes you be doing exactly two minutes and there's a piece of the hot pocket that is still uncooked, so it looks good, but you get down to that piece, you be like, dang, it wasn't cooked all the way through. I'm not cooked all the way through. Y'all are not cooked all the way through. So I think we need to change our perspective about this and let love in, y'all. I want to emphasize one more time this point of Think about what kind of love you may be missing on because you're holding so tightly to this list of perfection that is so not ideal, that so does not exist. Like I look at some couples who are just brave and bold and didn't care what people would say about them or how they looked according to a stereotypical couple and are living their best love lives like you know what i'm saying like they are enjoying love to its fullest extent they are living their best lives in love with one another and they don't care they know what they have they are secure in what they have and are just unpaid and that's where i'm trying to get to y'all like i said the series is teaching me so much and this regulation that i've been having over the last few months is like it's just blowing my mind and it's changing my perspective and making my heart more available for love and love the way that I believe God designed it. Like sometimes I wonder if we should just like date people blind and just talk and get to know people and then take the blinders off because that's love. Ah, that is a good concept. Like that, it has nothing to do with it. I won't say nothing. I, I want you to be attracted to the person. I do believe attraction plays a role in this, y'all. Absolutely. But sometimes our attraction can even lie to us. Like for the longest time thinking you're not attracted to a person because they don't meet your perfect list. But when you experience love and love in the way that it's supposed to be felt and it's healthy and it's good and it's, you know, doing great things for you in your life, then it's like, oh shoot, they mad attractive now. Like, uh-huh, sis, like you might be lying to yourself. Don't trust it. I really challenge this audience, this safe single left behind audience. To really think about it next time you have an opportunity to be approached by someone or think about the guys that you friend zoned in your life. Ooh, ooh. Think about the guys that you friend zoned in your life and go back over about why you friend zoned them and whether it had anything to do with this perfect list and whether or not you are missing out on some bomb, healthy, beautiful love because of your life. Do you feel me, sis? Do you feel me? Okay. Hopefully I didn't beat that dead horse too hard, um, but I hope you all got the message today that I was hoping to share. If you did, or if you feel like I missed something, or you wanna add something, or tell me your story, feel free to do it in the comments. My DMs are always open. I'm always grateful for the messages that you all send there. Um, if you have some ideas, again, of what more you all want me to talk about, I really am just covering different aspects of my journey um, of you know my singleness and what that showed me, what that revealed to me about relationships. All of that um, is kind of where I am with this series, but if you have ideas and you're like, man, I hope she'll cover this or we'll do this, make sure you let me know because I'm always looking for ideas for this and I promise I'm gonna be a little bit more consistent with this series. You'll probably get um, an updated one for this series. I'm gonna venture and say like every other week. Um, I post videos every weekend or that's that's my goal for the summer is to be posting every weekend and sticking to my schedule. Um, so I mean, I have an episode for Single Saved and Left Behind every weekend, but at least every other is what I'm shooting for so that you all can just stay current because you all have just received this um, series so well and I'm so grateful that it's helping you all. So all that said, subscribe if you enjoyed. Make sure you turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. And like and share and do all that good stuff. Have great conversations about this and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.